Hello, welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This week, it's all about the internet of tanks. No, 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 not those tanks, hot water tanks. I've just had a new hot water tank installed, and this one is a bit special. Ooh. So, Peter, we're in a quite cramped environment here. Yes. In my laund laundry room, uh, as it's, it's grandly called. It's to be here. And, it, <laughs> and in here, there is a new water tank. So, yes. I just want to explain to people that there was a water tank that looked very like that in there. Had the same footprint, before. yes. Yeah, pretty similar looking thing on the whole. But this is a completely different thing. This is a very interesting new bit of tech, but can you explain to me why it's different? What is the essential difference between this yeah, and the Yeah, so one? the essential difference is that with a regular tank, it heats everything from the bottom in one shot. So you have right. to heat the whole thing or nothing at all. So it's kind of like having the kettle full when you just want a single cup of tea. Right. But with this tank, it's heating just what you need and it learns how much you use and it, it, it exploits thermal stratification where hot water sits on Ooh. cold and it's always just injecting more heat from the top down and keeping it nice and separate. And so you can, uh, and then it therefore just uh, loses less heat, recovers more quickly, and has space to absorb uh, renewable power when it comes available. So what we're trying to do is make the tank emulate a battery as much as possible. Right. So with a regular tank, when it heats everything, there's not much room left over to take surplus solar energy from the roof. Whereas if we've just heated a third because that's all you happen to use, yeah. when there is a lot of surplus energy, we can charge a bit further and then ride through a few days without using any conventional electricity. Right. So the, the long-term aim then is to use less grid energy, less gas, whatever yes. you're using to it's, heat your water. It's too, yeah, it saves, it saves on heat losses because you just heat what you need, but then it also means that you can be more flexible about when you're heating so you can enable more renewable power, right. to, which is variable uh, by its nature. Yes, yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, clearly, because. I can't even feel any warmth. I mean, it, oh, no, no, it's, it's yeah. It's, the insulation must be amazing, because I know that's hot water, because I've just run the tap. Yeah, no, you won't, you, you, that's the only way you'll know there's any heat. Or you can tell, because you can, you can just look at the level. So at the moment, right. there's enough for a shower. And if you wanted some more um, heat there, you could boost it to, to whatever level you liked. Oh, right. And then if you look at the little light that's changed the color whilst it's heating. Right, because what's also interesting is, I can now hear the little pump going. Yes, we've got, yeah. a little, we've got a little pump which is facilitating this topping up of heat. So, because that's the other thing, in case people don't know, these are pressure tanks, those are already... No, these are part of your central heating system. Yeah. And, um, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same connections as a regular tank. So, right. we're trying to cram all the stuff that's on board this cylinder, the, 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 the computer and the control and the sensors, Within the same envelope, and they come in. You, they come in different sizes. I mean, is, is this a bigger one? In, this in is general? a mid. This is a mid, a mid, mid, a mid size. sized one. So you can go anywhere from a, a relatively small unit would be seventy liters up to right. two hundred and fifty, three hundred right. liters or right. beyond, depending upon upon what, you, what you're doing. This image here sh tries to explain how a regular hot water tank works. Right. You have a heating element right at the bottom, and from cold where it's all blue to red where it's all hot. It just heats everything in one go. Right. And you can see it going yellow in between. So it takes quite a long time to get the water up to a useful temperature. Yeah. So, and that's almost like putting a saucepan on a, on a stove. It's, yeah. it's heating it from it's underneath. It's a saucepan on a stove. Yeah. It's like your kettle. It's, yeah. it's a big, big version of those two things. The mixture tank uh, does things differently. What we have is the heating element at the top. Right. And then we use a special sensor and pumping arrangement to produce heat instantly and then pump it downwards through the tank. So you can see it's growing down towards the very base of the cylinder, and you have this red to blue zone, which is called the thermocline. It's a very sharp transition. You would have experienced it if you've ever gone diving. Uh, only know, once uh, I've experienced it, where it suddenly goes yeah, cold so, when you go deeper. So you take your yeah. toe in the water, it feels warm, and then you dive in and it's Baltic yeah. beneath the thermocline. Right. And so we're exploiting that principle here. So the, there are pumps that are moving the water around so That's the, correct. So is, yeah. is, where does the cold, so where does the cold, like the mains feed, come into so the, the tank? So the mains feed, like a normal tank, it comes into the bottom comes of the tank. Comes into the bottom, right. And it pushes the hot water out of the top. Right. And so what we've introduced is a system where we're taking cold water internally to the top and heating it and injecting it in. And we're controlling that all the time using sensors to modulate the power to the pump and the heating element to make sure you've got a nice even heating process right. continuously occurring. It, it, it's 
counterintuitive, isn't it? It is to, a bit, yeah. To heat water from the top. Yeah. It's not how you normally It's counterintuitive. It. Yeah. And actually, in a way, we got this, this wrong because it shows the heat at the bottom. But we thought oh, it's more intuitive. Yes. You see, we thought this would be more intuitive because of temperature yeah. and gauge a, a thermometer as the red mercury. Yeah. yeah. But actually, physically, it should be the other could, way around. It should be, it should be red around. at the top. But we could change that with yeah. the software yeah. if yeah. we wanted yeah. to. So we've moved to a slightly more uh, roomy area because it was a bit cramped in the in the in the boiler room. <laughs> Cozy, yeah. But this is really exciting. So what we're looking at here is a kind of daily use. I'm guessing a daily use graph of how the the tank uses energy. Is that am I close? Yeah, that's right. So it shows in red the amount of hot water that's in the tank. And oh, that's not the amount of energy it's used. That's the amount of hot water well, it's, stored. It, yes, yeah, so it's, it's it's you can translate one to the other because it's right. essentially the same thing: amount yeah. of hot water, amount of energy that's in the tank. You're interested in how much hot water you have when you want to have a shower, of course. Right. And you can also see in green how much capacity to absorb energy there is for the same time. So that's basically right. the rest of the capacity of the tank. Right. And then these precipitous drops, that, is yeah, that in your shower or Someone's in a very deep bath at that point. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> That um, so yes, yeah, so you can see there it's a very deep bath that's been drawn and it's taken up about 80% of its capacity, but it's recovered quickly afterwards. Right. And then you can start seeing as it uh, slopes down overnight how much energy is, <sighs> is dropping off. You can see whenever it's going up, that's when you're using energy. When energy is coming in either from the solar panels or from the boiler or right, from or the electric yeah. conventional, wherever it comes oh, from. I see. So that is, that is energy use effectively. That that's that it. Climb yes. there and that climb there. That's right. right. So when can we have another shower? Well, That's in amazing. that case, you could uh, within about five minutes of the previous shower, it had rec it rebounded right. because right. it's just quickly topping up from the um, top. Yeah, it recovers uh, quickly, so you can have lots of sequential showers if you wanted. Right. I'm not yes. suggesting you would, yeah. but no. Well, <laughs> but there's, when you've got a lot of people in the house and there's a lot yeah. of showering going on, what is interesting is the capacity to absorb energy is is which you would never think of in an or you know I would never have considered that with my old water tank. I didn't think of it in those terms. No, and when you think of it in those terms against how much wind and solar was available over that same period, you that, can oh, start they, that correlates. That's that, over the same period of time, right. yes. But that's, it's, it's difficult to translate what that means until you look at a price. So National Grid, they send a price out to all the generators and utilities right. every half hour. When there's too much wind, for instance, the price might go down, or if there's not enough supply, the price might go up. And so you can be, then become opportunistic about when to turn on. Right. So for instance, here, when the uh, price was a fraction of its average value, you could have charged the whole tank. Right. And so that's off the mains. Off I mean, the it, mains, it makes yes. Enormous and it did, sense. Yeah. Off the mains, because the energy could have been uh, a surplus wind on the northwest of Scotland yeah. or lots of solar down in Cornwall. It doesn't matter where it's from. If there's too much of it, you could turn the tank on yeah. and uh, take advantage of the drop in price that would result. Yes. Because what this also tells you is when you sort of big picture it, you know, my individual tank or even yours yeah. and my individual tank, they make no difference to the big picture. But if they were. A million tanks like yeah, this. Yeah, you want a fleet. It would make That's an it. enormous difference. I mean, That's right. When when that when there was that excess supply, and you wouldn't then be using that power when it when it was expensive and dirty. Exactly, and also That's you have lots of different profiles of use. You have some people who might be doing night shift, and right. so over over lots of tanks, over a fleet of tanks, you can then start to really adapt the aggregate demand based on how much variable renewable power that's going on at that right. time. So we're trying to build the internet of tanks fleet, so a big web of <laughs> tanks right. that can just yeah. behave like a giant battery for National Grid. It's not necessarily that you would centrally control that. I mean, because it sounds like each individual tank will learn its user Yeah, so each tank, can, each tank can decide on the basis of its historic use and can respond to a price signal right. that such as this from National Grid or from, from somewhere else. And there's lots of different ways that you could control a fleet of tanks, and that's what we're exploring over the next couple of years right. with this trial that you're a part of now. Right. As a user, then, you could be in your house and, and the price of electricity is very low and you don't know that. Yeah, and you you're don't not need bothered, to know anything. But, yeah. your, but your tank will start heating because it will start using that electricity. That's right. right. And the tank can do it in a number of ways. Either it could get a command by the internet or it could just look at the mains frequency on the plug because you can use that as a symptom of whether there's too much or too little generation with respect to demand at right. any moment in time. And so you can see here over the same period of time, when the frequency got too high, you could have been turning the tank on over that period of that time period as well. Time. Wow. And it's normally meant to be a 50 hertz. Yeah. But when it goes to say 50.1, that's when there's 
uh, not so much demand when there's lots of supply. Right. So you could be turning on to help balance the system. Right. So it's exactly when those peaks go into that red, red zone. band. Yep. Exactly. Wow. And then what is, it, what is the fifty pounds per annum? Well, so the in, so is that's that... one component of saving that you could buy catering to this service. So right. National Grid like to have things that turn on or off depending upon the frequency on standby. Yeah. And just by being available to do that, that's one potential way of, of saving on a bill. Right. It's a future prospect. At the moment, it's not done in a domestic setting. Right. And so we're looking to explore how could you do this um, at a national, on a national scale, a large enough fleet for yeah. it to make sense. Yeah. And would you say that the, the, this tank, well, you know, say it was completely full of hot water because it because we hadn't used any and there was a lot of solar and we'd it, we'd heated yep. it all. And it was effectively the battery was full. How long would that stay usable? That heat, right? So it's about just under a kilowatt hour of loss a day. Right. So in your case, it's approximately 10 kilowatt hours. Okay. So you, it would stop being useful once the temperature drops beneath a comfortable yeah, value, yeah. say 40 degrees. So you'd probably be looking at four, three or four or five days, um, depending upon how warm the, the house was yeah. at the time, uh, on, ba on the basis of pure heat loss. But right. we wouldn't ever want to get in that situation no, because no. we wouldn't want to overcharge the tank. Yeah. Um, we would adapt it to what was being used. That's, I think that's the crucial thing, because yeah. I, I was sort of thinking in like black and white terms. But, yeah. I want all full and hot, or all, all empty yeah. and cold, yeah. So, so, so it's, it's a, you're kind of working in between those two variables yeah, but with work. room to expand either way, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. That, but then, on the other hand, if you were wanting to have it in sort of turbo mode, you could have it constantly right. recovering to full charge if you wanted to have particularly long showers or yeah. deep baths or lots of them. Yes. So Peter, you set up the company or you were co-founded the company? That's or right. right. So my friend Ren and I set it up whilst we were still PhD students. And uh, that was back in 2014. And then we came out of the lab uh, last just over a year ago. And so now we're starting to work with a few UK manufacturers to get the components into the tank and right. everything working. So, yeah. And you've got one in your house. I you, have, you yes. One. And yeah, are, you, got, are you happy with it as I'm a customer? I'm happy so far. <laughs> it, with every week that passes, we realise it's you know reliable to the extent that it needs to be. So right. yeah, it That's becomes more reassuring. More reassuring. Yeah, because yeah. that was the thing I didn't even know when I first met you that our old water tank was on its last legs. You know, it was about 20, it's about 22 years old. We yes. had that one. Yeah. And it's always worked and it was still, but it was clearly yes, no, and, was and, suffering. And, and uh, yes, and hemorrhaging heat losses. It was hemorrhaging with it, heat. With, with it being so old. Yeah, no, so we're getting the field data now to get more confident about the reliability of the right. system and how well they work as a, a fleet. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a really. And do you have a sort of rough price guide then, if someone wanted to yeah, get so, one? So, so we're now working with some volume, a volume pr uh, production company of tanks, and we're looking to get the price to within a, the range of prices that you'd expect. So, it'd be on the slightly higher end, but not out with the market leading right. brand premium that you'd expect. Not, right. Not, not miles away. So, so it's roughly close to what if you were going yeah, to replace your but, tank with a regular immersion heater. So it's yeah, be... I mean, and if you're interested in energy storage, you could probably. Uh, Proxy it against a you know a home battery like a power right. wall you know so if that's ten kilowatt hours of energy storage in your for a three kilowatt hour say for five kilowatt hour home battery system yeah. at several thousand pounds so this is going to be way less than right. that as a right. way of st uh, way of um, so if you've got certainly energy. if you've got solar at the moment and you just export what you don't use having yeah. one of these makes enormous yes, amount of sense that, that makes enormous yeah. sense and I think it's something that we feel you do alongside or before having a home battery, it makes, from a cost point of view, right. that's what you're primarily interested in. It makes a lot of sense if you have a hot water tank to do, to do this sort of thing with a smart hot water tank. Like yes, yeah. so I got it all the wrong way around, as always. You did, yeah. I was an early adopter, but, jumped too soon. Well, the technology wasn't there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the <science. laughs> oh, oh, look at all that. That's a beautiful amount of stored energy in there. So uh, that's all we've got time for. I just want to explain quickly about the arrangements here. Now, I did not pay to have this tank installed. This is part of a trial, a nationwide trial of installing these tanks. They're all linked together over the internet. They've all got little computers on them. And it is part of a trial that is funded by the Department of Business, Energy, Innovation and Skills, otherwise known as BAYS. I don't really like that acronym. Anyway, that is well, that is who funded it. So we all funded it. All of us taxpayers funded my tanks. I get really angry about that and send me lots of rude comments. Please don't. You don't need to. But I'm not the only person who's got one. They've installed something like a few hundred of these around the country. They all talk to each other and they're trying to work out 
when is the best time to heat water, when is the best time to conserve energy, how, to, how, do, how does it use excess solar, all those things. So I'm part of a study and I'm very proud to be part of it. That's all we've got time for. Please subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the Patreon link because there's other things we pay for that aren't water tanks on Fully Charged, like camera people and editing, just to be transparent. I'm being transparent, all right? That's it. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.